So Claude just announced prom caching and a lot of people are saying that this is going to kill rag. I want to clarify that this is not going to kill rag and rather this is going to enhance it and make it faster. Now in order to understand why that is the case, what you need to do is we need to understand how the rag architecture looks like today. Right, so on the right side here, you can see an image where client makes a request and the request is then sent to the vector database. Then the data that we get from the vector database and the question by the user is sent to the LLM or the model that is going to respond to this query. This is then sent to the framework which is handling all of this and then essentially the user itself. Now this framework could be Langchain for example, right? So while the new prompt caching feature will address the fact that we are looking at the some of the content that is repetitively sent to the model, it's not necessarily going to solve a major problem that RAG is currently solving, which is giving up-to-date data and avoiding hallucination with the model. So if you go to this video by Google, I'm going to skip to the part where I can just quickly show you the advantages of RAG, right? So with RAG, you have data that is up-to-date as opposed to scenarios without RAG where you get hallucinated info if you ask a question that is relevant to today. So you can't get up-to-date answers. Obviously with RAG, you can also connect your own data, which is not the case with a scenario where you're only using LLMs for your use case. Now with prompt caching, you will still be able to use your own data. And I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit. We'll also be taking a look at the prompt caching document that Claude has shared. But you need to understand that one of the major advantages of RAG is the fact that it will get you up-to-date information. So let's say if I update something in my documentation, today prompt caching will maybe cache it after the user is asking the first question or when you make customizations to the prompt such that it knows that this is the data we need to cache. But with RAG, it will automatically fetch that data in real time. Now, obviously there are certain use cases that are small and those are the use cases that Claude has mentioned on the website and we'll also take a look at that. But you need to understand one fundamental difference for certain use cases, you may be better off just using prompt caching versus for most enterprise level use cases, it still seems that RAG will continue to be relevant. One more problem that I want to talk about when it comes to caching so if I go to one of my product and if I go to slash leaderboard, you can see some of these ranks have been same since the last three days where people are commenting every other day, which means some of these users should either be of different level or their total comments should be different. But because this data is cached on the server, I will always get the response that looks like this, right? So whenever I am refreshing this page as well, if someone created a comment, I'm still getting the same data because this data is cached on the server and it's not being updated. So with prompt caching, what we are letting go of is the fact that if I make small changes to my document or small changes to my documentation in my product, it's not going to reflect in the uh, data. Let's see, let's quickly also take a look at the document itself. So we understand this very clearly. You can see it enables developers to cache frequently used context between API calls. With this, customers can provide Claude with more background knowledge and example outputs, all while reducing costs up to 90% and latency up by 85%. And it's available in public beta for Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. And it's available in API. I'm also going to show you where you can use this. And you can see these are some of the use cases. When you're building conversational agents, you can reduce the cost for conversations. Now this is great for products where the data is not too much and the document is not frequently updated. This is the important part. If your documentation is frequently updated every other day, caching will actually work against the use case. Coding assistants improve autocomplete and code base QA, keeping summarized version of the code base in the prompt. This is a good use case, but again, the same problem. If you make some changes in your code, is the cache going to take that updated data or it's going to continue using the same cached data, which will lead to bad output long document processing. So if your product takes PDF documents and chats with that data, now PDF document will not necessarily change on a day to day basis. So this is a great use case of prompt caching in scenarios where you have detailed instruction sets, procedure procedures and examples to fine tune Claude's responses. This is again also a great use case where you're sending the same set of details, but the de details are way too long, right? Then there is the agenting, ser agentic search and tool use. 
So if you are calling the same research agent multiple times, you can use the cached results rather than calling it again and again. So this is again also a great use case for this prompt caching because the data is not changing. And obviously you can talk to books, papers, documentation, podcast, script, because again, all of this data is not changing. And these are some of the mind blowing results with prompt caching, where if you chat with a 1 million token cached prompt, where you're essentially talk, talking to a book, the initial without caching latency is 11.5 seconds versus with caching, it's 2.4 seconds, which is insane. Then there's the many short prompting where 1.6 seconds without caching, but 1.1 seconds with caching. Obviously the token size is way less here, 10,000. And I apologize. This is, I think not 1 million. This is hundred K. And then there's the multi-turn conversation where without cash, it would take 10 seconds, but with cash, it would take 2.5 seconds. So obviously this is well suited for certain scenarios, but I still don't see this replacing rag per se. And let me show you why. So in the rag architecture, currently vector database is very important because that's where your data is stored. Now in the rag architecture itself, you can ask a question. If this question has been asked before and the model already has context and you're using the prompt caching feature of Claude, rather than calling the vector database, you can directly go to LLM and process the response. But if your documentation has gone through some update, you can set up a flag that will, instead of going to LLM, first go to vector database, fetch new data, refresh the old data, refresh the prompt cache, and then send new data to the user. So rather than looking at it from the standpoint of replacing it, I am looking at it from the standpoint of using this to enhance your current rag output. You can look at the uh, pricing here. It will cost you $3.75 per million tokens of cash to write and 0.32 to read. So you first have to write in the cache and then read from the cache. Obviously writing is relatively more expensive because that's why you're storing it, but reading is easier maybe because you can do it thousand times in the future. So this is well suited for use cases where you have static data and you don't update that data often. This is the direction for you to take now. Again, the question here is from the standpoint of scalability. Is this approach scalable? If you're working with maybe one or two or three small uh, use cases, then maybe yes. But if you're looking at an enterprise level use case where data is updated almost every other day, maybe not the use case that you may be looking at standalone. But if you look at it from the perspective of integrating the prompt caching inside your RAG architecture, then this is a great use case for you to build on top of. They already have a customer who's using this notion for, I'm assuming to get static document data and so that they could, users could talk to the document. So again, one of the best releases in Gen AI from one of the best companies who recently also, I think added the open AI co-founder to their company. So they are headed in the right direction. I have been using Claude for quite long time now. And if you are also looking to use it, I have a course for you. You, where you can learn, where you can learn everything you need to know about Claude from the very scratch. So if you're interested, check that course out in the description, but that is going to be it for the video guys. I hope this video adds value to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.